Hey, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to show you how you replenish your inks in Olo and Copic. Talk about the pros and cons. This happens to be a demonstrator Olo marker, so you can see what's going on. Each half of the marker is self-contained, so it does not leak when you pull it apart. And each time you purchase two markers, no matter what they are, you get a connector with it for free. The connector is black that you get when it comes, I'm assuming they're all black but I get all black connectors with mine. You just twist them in. You can repair your markers any way you want. I do what they've done here, which is have a dark and a light color of the same family together. And that way, if I'm looking for the dark and I see the light, uh, the light nib sticking out, I know that I can just grab that one and the color that I want is gonna be on the other side. And since I have the full set, that really helps me to find the color that I want. So I'm calling this replenishing inks because Olos you can't really refill. They don't sell bottles of ink. They sell these cartridges. And the cartridge is basically this body of the marker with a cap on it. And it is full of ink. So with these markers, when they run out, they run out. You don't get a really advanced warning. You get a little warning because they start to lighten somewhat. But once they're empty, they're empty. <laughs> That's kind of it. And you have to go order a new one and wait for that. So they come as this little little plastic thing. You uh, pop off the top. I don't know whether it's a twist or a, a pop off, but I kind of did both and it worked. And then you stand it up vertically. Don't lay it down because it's basically a little jar of ink. And then you need to take the nib out. I'm doing it with a pair of tweezers. I'll link those in the doobly-doo in case you need a pair. These have a little grabby fork things on the end. And I try to grab it as low as possible because you can actually pull that foam off, at least on other nibs and other brands. So I'm trying to grab as low as possible. You can see there's like a little stump on the inside. That's pretty stable. But then the squishy nib is the thing that you don't want to yank on too much. Now, some people will grab that with a paper towel and pull it out with their fingers and be just fine. But I like these tweezers. They just kind of give me a little more control. And then you just pop it into the new cartridge and then you're ready to go. And that's like it. There isn't anything super messy with it unless you're trying to grab the nib off of the top with your fingers. And then that would of course be messy. But a Copic marker is different. Uh, Copic markers, you can buy a full bottle of ink. And this one wasn't completely ready like to be re-inked. I could have waited a little bit longer on it, but I'm gonna re-ink it anyway. What I do, because I am like not the person who's gonna weigh my Copics, that's what some people do. I think that's a lot of effort. And I just take the chisel nib out and I get my ink bottle. Now I have a whole bunch of the old ink bottles still left. The new one is on the right. And this one has a little needle thing and you can squeeze ink directly into your marker. And it has measurements on the sides. If you have an idea how many ounces that you want to put in your marker, then you can just squeeze it until you get that much in. I do it differently, even with the new bottles. So I'll show you what I do because I don't do the weighing thing. As I said, I grab the marker and a tissue and I just wrap the tissue around the pen and I do this a whole bunch of markers at once so I get a multicolored tissue. But that will help me to keep from spilling everything all the way down my hand because uh, yeah, I've done that before. And I drip in drops. Now, if my marker is not completely dry like it is now, I'll do three rounds of 10 drops because I can count to 10 and not lose track on where I am. And so I just counted 30 drops. If it's completely dry, I'll do 40 drops. And if it's only, you know, I'm re-inking it because I'm going to travel or something, then I might do 20 drops if it's not really dry, but I just want to make sure I top it off. And if you put too much ink in, you will have some blooping. So I sometimes will have blooping and I just scribble it off. But I also have a lot of these bottles of ink and I have them from a long time ago. So I'm okay with losing a little bit of that occasionally. Now, since my blue greens are freshly inked up, I thought I would do a little art in the chroma coloring sketchbook. And these first six drawings are in the class. And if you're interested in taking the class, links in the doobly-doo to a page that has all the information on the Olo markers and the classes and the hex charts and everything. Here I'm going to compare on the left the Olo marker 
blue green trio that's in my set and on the right hand side the equivalent in Copics. And these are, you know, going to be a little bit different just because the Olo tend to be more pigmented. They're stronger in color. You'll get more subtlety in the Copics. And of course, you have more color variations, more, more numbers of colors right now in Copics. So I'm still going to try to stick to these three colors for this iguana in both marker brands. Now I'm doing this because I had a number of people ask me after the class came out this weekend and after my marker set came out, they're like, well, do I have to buy these Olos in order to take the class? And I thought I said you don't, but maybe I didn't say it enough, but no, you don't. You can take the class in Copics as well. And I chose the colors in my Olo set because they're colors that coordinate really nicely with colors in other brands. It's a very basic kind of rainbow group of colors. And that way I could do a class and demonstrate it in Olos, which the chroma coloring and imaginary creatures are both done in. And I could also offer it to those who use other brands of markers. So you know you don't have to have the same brand. That's with any of my classes. Use whatever brand you've got. Because I want you to make art. I don't care if you're not getting the exact results that I'm getting. Just make art. Now, some of you have not been in a class with me in eons, and I got to say, I miss you. I think you need to come take a class. I have not seen a lot of people even on social media because social media just doesn't show me anything anymore. And a lot of you have left social media. So please come take a class with me. I miss you. Miss all my friends. All right. Links in the doobly-doo for all that. So go sign up. Now, I'm going to talk quickly about the pros and cons. Uh, environmentally, both brands have plastic trash generated. It's just the way it is. Like they're going to have to send you ink in a bottle and you have to figure out what to do with that bottle. Olo, however, is trying to figure out how to make them recyclable or make them out of recyclable plastic or whatever. Stay tuned for that. But Copics are not recyclable and it's just the thing. You'll get more little bottles of trash from Olo as you re-ink your pens. Whereas with Copic, you have a bigger bottle. It'll last you longer and more re-inkings, but it's a bigger bottle. So maybe you can make a craft out of them. Maybe that's the solution. Uh, the mess factor on both of them, I don't find to be particularly difficult in terms of re-inking. The Copic bottles, the new ones are a little harder to squeeze. So if you have arthritis, that might be an issue. Uh, but both, both of them are fairly easy, especially if you get a little set of tweezers that you can use. I'll put a link in the doobly-doo and you can pop your nibs out and that sort of thing very easily without making any messes. And cost-wise, Olo is kicking Copic's butt. It's just the way things are over at Olo and I am super happy that they are making it more affordable. There are more affordable markers as well, but those are often not refillable. So you can weigh all of your own priorities because yours will be different than anybody else's. I would love to see us all stop shaming each other for liking or not liking whatever brands we use. So that'd be good. All right, this is the finished drawing. You can't tell very much even where the line is between the two brands. They are both quite nice. The Olo markers tend to be a little more pigmented. You get a little more subtle transitions with Copics. But when once you learn how to use Olos and practice with them, you can do just the same work. And that's what all these other drawings are. They're all in Olo markers in the chroma coloring class. And you have the backs that you could do in other drawings or stampings or whatever you want. Now this weekend, I'm having an open studio Zoom call and I need cheered up. So we are going to have a big party. End of summer theme, wear your Hawaiian shirts, uh, bring anything you want to snack on. That's a vacation treat. And I'm going to see if I can find my blow up palm tree. That'll be interesting. And then in September, I'm doing Let's Draw Together. We're focusing on alcohol markers all September long. I'm going to be going through some of my alcohol marker classes myself and just refreshing things and would love to see you do some too. Come and share and ask questions and we'll see what we come up with. So I would love to see you. Please don't just stay on YouTube. Come take a class with me. Come join me in Art Venture. I miss lots of you guys so much. All right. I will see you later. Bye-bye.